Hello, I am Renee Langbart, the Clay Center Area Chamber of Commerce Director. And today I am joined by two friends of mine, Maury Flourish and Jason Hood. And we are here today to talk about the Clay Center Community Improvement Foundation. And I have to tell you, I'm really excited to hear about this. I uh, hear, you know, CC, CIF kind of thrown around everywhere. And I think most people hear the same thing or they hear Improvement Foundation. But I don't think a lot of people actually know what the Improvement Foundation is. So uh, to start us off, why don't you tell us a little bit about what what it actually is and maybe how it got started. Okay, well, the Clay Center Community Improvement Foundation has actually been in existence for a long time. It was incorporated a long time ago and it kind of went dormant for a long time and then was brought back to life probably 10 or 15 years ago, something like that. And we've been actively trying to raise money for our community ever since. Very good. So, so what is your role within the Community Improvement Foundation? Well, I just happen to be the chairperson, but there's six board members. Okay. So we all work together and we have meetings every month and we just try to stay in front of all the projects that we're helping with and, and have fundraisers every so often and that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, the other board members besides Jason are um, Robin Thurlow, and Joel Mason and okay. Jill Muggler and Karen Bryan. Okay, all very active people in the community. Yeah, um, so yeah we've got a good board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's a nice solid board you got there. Um, so Jason, you're one of the board members. Right. Um, how long have you been involved with the foundation and um, kind of like what kind of role do you um, fill? Right, yeah, so I've, I've been involved with the foundation for I split a term, so what, eight years? Six, seven, eight years? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I help with the f fundraisers and the activities that we do, and if there's an accounting question, I typically mm -hmm. get to help answer that. Sure. So, so how often during the year do you guys do events or fundraisers, so to speak? Once or twice. Once or mm -hmm. twice? Yep. Okay. For ourselves. Yeah, our, our big ones in conjunction with our annual meeting, mm -hmm. Okay. typically. All mm -hmm. right. So. And uh, when is your annual meeting? Is it open to the community or is it just for your board members? We, we'd always have a meeting for board members and members of the foundation ahead of time and then we have an open, uh, usually a fundraiser of some sort for the whole community. This okay. last year it was martinis and mistletoe. Oh, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so you picked up on that. Um, I know that that is, I think, in the third or fourth year of mm -hmm. existence. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you tell the viewers kind of like what your role was in the Martinis and Mistletoe and what you were able to accomplish through that event? Okay, well, um, this year, Martini and Mistletoe founders decided to give the money to the foundation for the sake of raising money for a match day. Okay. So they, they basically run the fundraiser. They have experience with with doing it yes. and how they want to do it. So yes. they just choose who they want it to benefit. And so they chose us this year. And mm -hmm. so we, we helped them um, with what they needed, but they kind of run it. They so run it. yeah. Very good. Yeah. All right. So what are some of the other projects that you guys have been able to accomplish uh, through the community improvement? Yeah, well, I know when, you know, when I first started, one of the things we did was help with the Crime Stoppers signs oh, around yeah. town. Uh -huh. So that's something visible that a lot of people might see. Now, is that still an ongoing project? No, that was a that one time where it we was a one time thing. We had okay. put some grant mm -hmm. money in for that. So, uh, re you know, recently, the we helped with the sculpting Tiger Pride. Yes. So that's been in the press a lot lately. There's yes. a new bronze tiger statue up at the high school. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. um, some some ongoing. Um, funds that we have are um, the zoo mm -hmm. down at Utility Park, yes. and the there's also just a general pool and park fund for the benefit of any pool or park. We use some money out of that fund to help with the slides and diving boards at the pool. At our pool here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so we have ongoing stuff as well as one-time projects. And, Very good. And Safari Run. Yeah. which is another huge, huge project, project in the yep. community. Um, I think that brings so many people to town. I'm always amazed at visitors that stop there um, and 
either enjoy the playground itself or um, people say st um, things about the, the fence, which I don't think you guys directly had a part of the fence part with the commemorative fence planks. Is that correct or you did? Those, well, all of it was private donations. Sure. The whole project was private donations. So um, the thing that was, the thing that's interesting about that project is that, you know, there were, there were hundreds of people that helped every single day build that playground. So it was really fun that we got so many people involved and little tiny donations up to really large donations. Uh -huh. So that was really fun and it's really, it's fun that we get to help with that because that type of a thing involved so many people on such a various levels. You know, some people just working with their hands, some people that could just give money, you know, compared to like what Jason was saying about the sculpting tiger pride, mm -hmm. the bronze tiger, that was a, a much smaller group of people that gave larger amounts of money to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So it didn't involve as many people, but that's the thing that's really wonderful about a community foundation is that we can help with anything that the community dreams of that they want to do. Well, so. it, it helps remove some roadblocks because some of those projects just, it doesn't make sense for them to have their own nonprofit designation. Sure. And so they just kind of use us as their fundraising mechanism, you know, for a, like a one and done type of project. It sure. just makes more sense to run those funds through the Improvement Foundation and it, we're able to help get some of those things done right. that otherwise may not happen. And that makes, a, that makes a lot more sense now that I hear you guys explain it that way. Um, so we kind of touched a little bit about, um, it's called the Clay Center Community Improvement Foundation. So I know it's not just Clay Center. Can you share with the viewers uh, the other communities that it actually envelopes? Sure. Um, there, really anyone in Clay County um, can benefit from using the Improvement Foundation. Not like just Clay Clifton, Center. Wakefield, Morganville, yes. Green, um, Longford. Yeah, any communities in our county can Very good. be yeah, a part and of and the And we foundation. encourage that. Yeah, yeah. you guys want to see that happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we have um, something big to talk about, something that's coming up with uh, the foundation in the next few months. And uh, so we'll be back in just a few minutes. The living room. It's a great place to watch TV. Just like your backyard, break time at the office, or waiting for your ride. Now you can watch TV everywhere. Stream your favorite shows or live TV from many channels in your cable package on any computer, tablet, or smartphone. It's all included with your Eagle Communications TV service for no extra cost. Sign up to watch TV everywhere today. Call or visit eaglecom.net to learn more. I'm Renee Langbart, the director of the Clay Center Area Chamber of Commerce, and I'm joined by Jason Hood and Maury Flourish, um, part of the Clay Center Community Improvement Foundation. I'm really excited to hear a little bit more about this um, because I think, like myself and other viewers, kind of in the dark exactly what it is that you do. So, um, one of the things that I want to make sure that the viewers understand is exactly what your role is in community improvement, fundraising, grants, all of that kind of a thing. So uh, what exactly, um, we kind of made reference to, you are the funnel rather than the springboard. So you guys actually don't do the fundraising uh, for the different organizations, but kind of explain your role in that whole process. Yeah, so ideally, um, a community improvement foundation would have a large endowment, which means we would have that money invested and then we would use those investment, that investment income to give away as grants. Okay. But since our foundation doesn't have a large endowment, it, it makes more sense for us to support projects on an individual basis okay. right now while we're working towards that goal. Okay. So what happens typically is in an organization will come to us with a community need in mind and then we will support them as a project in the foundation, which means that they can receive tax deductible donations okay. towards their project. So that group puts together, you know, a team of people that are passionate about that particular right. thing and they go out to donors and raise that money and then that money comes to us and it's tax deductible okay. to those donors. So like we've kind of given reference to 
the zoo at mm -hmm. Utility Park. Mm -hmm. So you are not directly affiliated with the fundraising campaign. Essentially, the fundraising campaign exists and was created by those people invested in that. And they do the fundraising and then the monies are funneled through you so that it can be tax deductible. Is that correct? Yes, okay, exactly. Perfect. Yes. All right. I think that's an important um, point to touch on so that uh, your phone lines aren't hitting up like crazy about right. needing you to go out and fundraise. Yeah. Um, I, I would say that we're a partner okay. mm -hmm. with the people that are actually doing the fundraising and we just provide them a mechanism to Which solicit tax, tax deductible and, yes. donations mm -hmm. from the community. Yes, and that's a huge asset um, for any right. fundraising campaign, so. Yeah. So I hear that there's a pretty big thing coming up uh, this year in September mm -hmm. called Match Day. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the first, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So why don't you uh, share with our viewers a little bit exactly what Match Day is? Because it sounds like it could really be utilized as a huge pivot for these organizations. Yeah. So. So Match Day is something that is really big in the foundation world and lots of communities around us, our size, do Match Days every single year. Okay. And of course, if they can do it, we can do it, right? That's so right. <laughs> That is exactly right. So um, in September, on September 20th, which is a third Thursday, okay. the, the Clay Center Business Association mm -hmm. has agreed to let us kind of team up with them. Mm -hmm. So they will be doing their typical third Thursday promotion the same day that we're doing Match Day. And there will be, um, a community meal as well that PEO and Rotary are planning on serving. So the idea is to kind of have a lot of reasons for the community to come downtown. And our, we will be at the museum. Okay. And we will be there with nonprofits that have chosen to participate in Match Day. Okay. And they will be trying to get their donors to come to match day or show up online. There will be a website as well if, okay. if a person isn't able to come in person. And we have a fund of money that we are giving away to these nonprofits um, on a 50% 50, 50 match. Okay. So if someone comes in and gives $100 to the zoo, then we will give another $50 towards the zoo. Okay. That so. is very exciting. So the money's going to add up even quicker. Right. Ideally. So how is something like this um, possible for a community like our size? Well, the Martini and Mistletoe fundraiser started it off okay. and then we were able to get a private donation as well. So okay. we have $15,000 to give away because of those two things. Okay. Um, our hope is that with the example of this first match day mm -hmm. that we will have some people that can come to us and say, oh, I really like what you're doing and I want to provide match money for years into the future. So we would love it if individuals or businesses would like to come forward and provide match day money for the future. Okay. And, and that's the way that Manhattan's works is they have one person that'll match funds for everybody that day. It's really yeah. staggering to think about. Mm -hmm. It is. It's amazing to think about. I'm so thankful for um, those kinds of generous people that see the need to. Well, it makes their it makes their money go further as well. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's a win-win for everybody. So we're going to take another little break here, and then when we come back, um, we're going to talk about the transfer of wealth. Doesn't that sound exciting? <laughs> it does. So we'll see you guys in just a few minutes. Eagle Communications is your ultimate business partner. We provide business class phone with customizable features and fast, reliable internet. Your knowledgeable team at Technology Solutions has a broad base of IT services to meet your needs. Let the experts at Marketing Solutions get your message to the right people on the best platforms. The only piece missing is your business. Call Eagle Communications today at 877-61-EAGLE. Hello, I'm glad to see you back and I am Renee Langvart with the Clay Center Area Chamber of Commerce and I'm joined with Maury and Jason with the Clay Center Community Improvement Foundation and we're going to talk about something that really boggles my mind but the transfer of wealth. So tell our viewers a little bit 
about what the transfer of wealth really means. Because to me, in my peon little brain, it means that somebody gives me $100. <laughs> I'd be thrilled. <laughs> so why don't we talk a little bit about what the transfer of wealth really means. All right, we can do that. Um, so in, back in 2010, mm -hmm. the Kansas Association of Community Foundations and the Kansas Health Foundation okay. did a study and they did all those wonderful things with numbers that I don't know how to do. Mm -hmm. But they were able to show for the whole state of Kansas, county by county, what their expectation would be for wealth to transfer from one generation to the next, okay. and when, how much that would be and when that would happen. Okay. So they were able to provide counties with this data, and they set a goal to to say what if we could capture 5% of that money as it was transferring from one generation to the next and and that money could then be invested for endowment purposes for our for the future. needs for the future. So there's three essentially, three different mechanisms for transfer of wealth, correct? Three different ways that it's through an heir. So mm -hmm. if somebody passes, right. then the money gets directly transferred to the heir, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Then there is charitable transfer. So if somebody dies and they um, will money to a charity, correct? Mm -hmm. And yep. then what was the third? Taxes. Mechanism? Taxes, okay. Right, Which, right. Yes. So certainty of death plan. and taxes, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hood. <laughs> so, the importance of that data moving forward tells you what information? Well, the idea, the, the idea is that we don't know if the next generation of a family that lives in Clay County is in our county mm -hmm. or if that next generation might be somewhere else, even out of state. So. The idea is that um, someone that's raised their family in Clay County, mm -hmm. um, we would love for them to consider, you know, what that's done for them and what's the, what that's mm -hmm. meant to them in their lives and what it would mean to our county in the future if they could leave part of their estate with a charity instead of all of it leaving and leaving our county forever. Exactly. Yeah, the data suggests that a large portion of it leaves Clay County, you know, and so this is kind of a pay it forward concept right. to a community that was good to your family. And I think it's important to kind of note that this is ideally where estate planning really comes into play. Um, even if you're, you know, not getting older in age, estate planning is better when it's done um, kind of for the future and knowing where you're going. I mean, because none of us know, obviously, um, when the end will come for each one of us, but um, having a plan in place and definitely, I think what you touched on, remembering the communities that, you're, that you grew, grew your family in. And this community is exceptional in the way that it gives back to the families, either with the school district, um, the extracurricular activities that the kids can partake in, and the quality of life that our community as a whole offers to people. And I think it's really important to uh, remember that when you think about um, the transfer of wealth and right. remembering how much good, even what you might think is a smaller amount of money, how much good it can do for the future because um, 5% doesn't sound like a whole terrible amount of money, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, well, I think it's important to have that communication with your family. Yeah. So that, you know, juniors know what the seniors' wishes are. Yeah. You know, and, and then can carry that out someday on behalf of the seniors. Yeah, uh, that's what I think I lacked in being able to communicate. Like, it's so important to know that plan, you know, for the whole group of people, the whole family, to know exactly where your heart lies. And, um, and I think like when we right. can do that, you're also passing down those qualities of character, um, not just the qualities of transfer of wealth. But um, I think when you see someone who's passionate about where they come from or what they can do for the future, it really, um, I know for myself, my children have adopted the same qualities that 
hold dear to me because I've communicated with them. They see me live it out. So I think mm -hmm. that's really important for people to understand that transfer of wealth, kind of how it really does impact the community for a great thing. Yeah, and I should also mention that the the community foundation model is really perfect for that type of thing because if a person wants to support more than one thing, they can do that all with one charity. They can they sure. can give that money to the Improvement Foundation with instructions for scholarships and the zoo or sure. the hospital and the museum or you know, it doesn't it doesn't have to just come to the foundation with open ended um, I, with an open-ended, like, oh, the board gets to decide what to do with it. I mean, but you people can, could do that, You too. can do that as well, or if you know for sure that, you know, you know what type of things you want to support, you can do that as well. So it's very flexible. Yeah. Very good. And, and we do have donor-advised funds available now, so if you want to make a donation before you pass and you and see see the good that it does, sure. you can make a, you know, a donation to us in a donor-advised fund and still have some input on where that money goes. To something relatively new that we're doing now. Very mm -hmm. good. Yeah. All right. Well, I am very thankful to hear more about this, and I know our viewers um, that are watching, I'm sure they're um, equally as thankful to hear exactly what it is that you guys do and how you guys are progressing our community forward with all of the different um, venues that you're kind of attached to. So thank you so much for yeah. everything there, that some, you do. There's some really good information on our website too. Okay. It explains a lot of that. What's that website? Do you know it? It's claycentercif.org. Okay. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining me, guys. I really appreciate it. Good to see you yeah. guys. And thank you to everybody watching, and we will see you next time.